Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dash Tower for Pocket Playthrough video series where we usually play a few rounds of a game. In this video, we will show you one round of Shogun no Katana, game designed by P.S. Martinson and Federico Randazzo and published by Placentia Games and Postscriptum. We're using a prototype copy of the game, so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Hi everyone, and here we are for our pocket playthrough for Shogun no Katana. I'm playing here as the uh, blue player. I'm here as the uh, yellow player. And we're going to take you through one round of this game, and specifically round two, because we can show a little bit more after round one. Things are really just getting set up in round one. We've got a few things ready to show you here in round two. Uh, we are sword crafts people and we are trying to craft a variety of swords for different families and eventually by the third or fourth round for the shogun himself so this out here all the worker placement spaces are out here uh, these are our workers we each have four available at the moment uh, with three that we can unlock as the game goes on and then over here we have the forge board and you can see on my forge board, I've got two swords already in the works. And I have three. I haven't actually started yet, uh, but I'm getting ready to collect the resources for them. Yes. So we'll take you through the mechanics as we move through the round. And so Stella has the first player card and we'll take the first action. For my first turn, I will... Now, in the previous turn, I've gathered some money here. Uh, with getting the sword, it's when you take the sword, you get some money. Yep. Little, and pre-purchase yeah. uh, yeah. funds. I really like these um, these little miniatures. This is still prototype, but it's already a lot of details here. So I'll put it there. Go to the market. I will buy two, so I can buy as many as I want. So I've got. I want to get two stones, two wood, and one leather. That should do me good. And so that cost. comes to a total cost of two, six, nine. Okay, just give me one change, please. Okay. And so I also two get wood, yep. two stone, stones, and and one leather. Yes. So we use the wooden components here as a basic one, and then you we'll show you later how we upgrade it. And I can choose one of these market cards. Yeah. I'll I'll well these two are the same, so I'll get one. Okay. And this is revealed to reveal another one of the same market card there. Yes. Okay. And that is my turn. All right, so my turn. I'm going to go to the palace because there's a good engine building element here and Stella's actually already ahead of me on that. So I'll go there. I get to place one of my family members into one of these five rooms. And I'm going to place there and then take the action that's printed there. And for this one is to buy a lacquer for two coins. So rather than four. Rather than four at the market. Oops. So I get my lacquer. You can only get one. I can only get one. I can only do that action once. But once I get more family members there, I'll be able to rearrange them and do the actions for all of the spaces I'm in. Now, after I've taken the action there, Thematically, the, uh, the Shogun doesn't want to show favor to one player or the other, so Stella gets to take one of the actions in her current rooms. Yeah, I'm just going to choose this one, um, which is, just take the two coins, please. Two coins. Thank you. There we go. Okay, and that is my palace action. My turn now. Now, instead of going to the center, I'm going to activate the sword making process on my own board by placing my worker here. Now, when I place my worker here, let's just put it like this so you can see, um, you activate whatever it is in the same column, or you can also place it here if you want to activate a row. But in this case, obviously, I want to activate these three, it's more efficient. And activating means putting the resource required here, um, it's needed is a um, yep. and move it there because it's towards the uh, correct resource. This one is wood, move it there towards the correct resource, 
and this one is a letter and this is why I got this to uh, try to combo things or try to have enough without going to the market again and that goes there yes so that's feel sufficient <laughs> yep. so as you'll see sometimes the saws will move up or down or sometimes they'll move to the side essentially Correct. they move to the next space in the row of the resource that you've just placed that's correct like this one for example um, this is um, a stone which is going to go here and this is also going to go here so I need to do something there yes there's a couple of ways around that but correct. you do need to set up your board so they don't bump into each other yes um, and I believe that is my turn yes and I am actually going to take a very similar turn so I'm going to activate this column here uh, this sword here requires wood so I'll slide wood in and move up to the next wood row. And I'm going to put stone as the next resource required in here. And so that slides up to the next stone row. My turn now, I still have two workers. I will try to activate the palace action or the family member action, putting it there. Now, because I activate it, I can move my family member um, however I want to. So let's say I don't actually need like a, a cheaper like a, so I'm gonna put it there uh, and then now I have this bonus card that I've been holding on since the first round. I'm gonna ac activate this by using it, putting it here and then so this is activating the immediate effect at the bottom of the card yes it's giving you a temporary family member correct so that's used and i can pay which is um the cost here is three so i can pay three coins which i am yes. okay to slide this under my board um hence when i complete something i will get uh complete something in that um, row, I will get the bonus. Um, so I'll get this one and that one and then whatever it is underneath the row and column bonus. Yep. Yeah, so that's how all these cards work. There's an immediate bonus and then mm -hmm. you can purchase an ongoing bonus. Yes. Now continue. So, yeah. um, with you can also, action. and you've also got uh, your family member. Correct. That you can, yes. A permanent family member. And I can put it there. So I can only, I can put one parent family member, the bonus and then move around. Now I activate everything. Um, two money, three money, one wood, yep. and moving this. So and two bonus movements. So three money and a wood. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to use it from left to right. So this one here, that's to do with the, my decoration. Yes, up in the academy. Can you please move my stone? Yep. Well, uh, it becomes clear later. Yep, so we've got four tracks up there, one for each of the... Um, uh, each materials. of the resources yep. and we're training our artisans in the art of decoration yes so we can upgrade these materials later on to have a better quality which is upgrading next to it and yes. then that means more points when we complete the sword yes now i am doing this now so i'm going to because i know that earlier i know that there's going to be clash um, if everything's moving in the same direction. So I'm going to activate this one and put the stone there. And then later on I can put my worker here, activate this one to go down, this one to go right first before this one to go up. Yeah, so that's very good. That's, that's the sort of action you need to take in this game to avoid swords clashing and keep things going efficiently. Yes. So that is my turn. Okay, and then uh, once again, like before, I get to activate one of my family members' abilities, and I only have one family member there, so I can choose to spend two coins to gain one lacquer, lacquer. which I'm going to do because if you see my forge board, I need a wood and two lacquer to finish these swords, and that is what I have. My next action, I'm going to keep building these swords again. I feel like I might be a little bit inefficient here. Stella's got three swords going <laughs> at once, but I'm quite, you know, I need to keep these things moving and I want to try to unlock these extra workers, That's which correct. you can get by doing swords sooner. So I'm going to activate this column again. Uh, you took the wrong work worker. Did I? My apologies. <laughs> these workers, as I say, I have not unlocked them. I'm going to activate 
this column again. So you can activate any row or column as many times as you wish. And then I'm going to put a lacquer, it's the last resource needed, into this sword, and a wood into this sword. Now, I could choose to deliver this sword right away, but you get a lot more points for a sword by decorating it. So I can leave that there until I choose to decorate it, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So that's the end of that turn. I think the sensible thing for my next action is to do this again. So the next, yep. the next one, I will activate this. I have all the resources I need. So Wood there, over here. Shift that down, yep. yep. Second one is this one, so stone there. Shift that to the right. Yep. Ha that has to go first before this one, because now I'm activating this and this shift upwards. Yep. There you go. Very good, very efficient. Mm. Try um, to be. <laughs> yep. um, one of the things, you can, you can move to simultaneously and swap their positions. Uh, but yeah, it needs to be in the same activation. And this is definitely need a lot of thinking ahead. Yes. So you can have, say, four swords ready to go to make it more efficient as long as you know where they're going to go and you have the resources and so on. Yes. All right, my next action with my final normal worker, I'm going to go to the academy. So this is where we train our decorators and then decorate our swords. So I'm going to train my stone decorator. So I need money right now, so I'm looking for an increase in money. Then I can activate all four of my decorators once. So that's, I can decorate each type of resource once. A sword can't have the same sort of resource decorated twice, but that's not an issue for me because I have no uh, repeats. So I'm going to decorate this wood, changing out from the wooden piece to the plastic one. This stone, like so. And this lacquer. I don't have any leather on my swords that's undecorated at the moment, so I can't activate that one. Then I gain the money from the bottom of the column from each of those decorators. So I had a stone, a wood, and a lacquer. Three, one, and one. I gain five, five coins. All right, uh, now that I'm finished, Stella gets to activate one of her four decorators in the same way. So I, this is similar yes. to the palace. I'd like to do the wood, please. Okay, so I'll give you one, one decorated wood, and okay. we swap that out. And, and that I gives you a coin, coin. because you. you are at one on the wood decorating. Woohoo! All right, now that I've fully decorated up this sword, I'm going to deliver it and go through the, the following steps. So first, uh, this flower represents the victory points. I gain the victory points shown on the tile, which is five. So five points. Then I gain victory points based on the current round. So it's currently round two and I get plus two victory points for delivering a sword in this round. Looks like the later you wait, the more points you get, but then you can't unlock your extra workers. Yeah. And the longer they stay there, the more they choke up your board as well. That's correct. So. Then I gain points equal to effectively the costs of the decorated resources on that sword. So I've got a wood which costs one, a stone which costs two, and a lacquer which costs four, all decorated, so that is seven. So I'm going to gain seven points for the decoration. So that's actually, the points is actually up there, but it's the same. Yes. Actually, it's, sorry, these are, this is where it shows here, <laughs> with the points yes. icon. Yeah, but they, they actually cost um, and um, worth the same, exactly the same. Next, I get to activate the benefits in the row and column of where that sword finished. I get to do that in either order, and I can actually break that up by playing a card, because I have this card here, which lets me double one of those benefits. So what I'm going to do 
is I've, I need to start building up on resources again. So I'm going to play this card for its immediate effect and double the resource benefit. So I'm going to get two lacquer, which is the most expensive. So if I can get some swords worth lacquer, that's going to be worthwhile. And two stone. That's really good because you get double of that those two resources, not just the one on the board. Yes. Then I'm going to, in the act of playing this card, I then get to pay for the ongoing bonus by paying three coins and slipping this card under the column. And then I get the benefit of the column, which is now three plus two is five coins. Good, very good combo, Tarot. And I know that this sword is going to finish in the same position, so I'm going to get those benefits again when I can finish that sword. Very good. Next, I get to take the, the Sashimono, the little flag tile, so there are four different flag tiles in the game, and move it to my Sashimono area. And you're trying to complete, you're trying to get sets of different Sashimono, but you can also target in-game objective cards, which give you points for getting the same ones. Now this is the starting one, and once I complete it, I can choose any one of the Sashimonos I want. And looking at that, I'm going to hopefully get that objective card. So I'll trade out my starting one for a white. Okay, the next step is I move the sword down to here, filling them up in reading order. I haven't unlocked this worker yet, but once I deliver this, I will be able to unlock that worker. Finally, I'm now an experienced craftsman in these three resources, and I can put some of those resources up here to put on the Shogun Sword later in the game. So I want to take, you can take zero, one, or two of the resources of the sword you've just delivered, and move them up here, and later you'll put them into a sequence for the Shogun Sword, which can be worth a lot of points in the last round. Okay, and that completes the delivery of my sword and my turn. Now, I'm actually out of workers, but there is a worker which is the monk that you can hire. The cost of hiring a monk, it's a once-off only, so once you use it, it will return to the board. Yep. It's more and more expensive, um, so the first one's five, uh, now the second round is six, but the more money you have towards the end of the round as well, so I guess that's balance it. Yep. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay six to hire one of my two monks. So I can hire both of them if I want to. Yep. So I will put this for the decoration area. Yep, the academy. To academy to move my uh, decoration guide two steps yep. on the stone track. Might yep, as well. so yeah, each of the monks comes with a bonus, makes the action that you're using slightly more powerful. Correct. Rather At than the academy, one. it's moving two steps on the track instead of one. With the monk. Yes. So, Monk is, you know, skillful in a lot of things. A lot like of influence. It. Correct. A lot of influence comes with being a monk. So with that as well, I will upgrade um, four things because I've got here one each, so I can only do one each. So, one. Thank you. Just okay. put it there. Lacquer. Yep. Second one is my leather. Yes. And next is my wood. And my stone. So I can have two of them upgraded, but as long as it's one resources each in total. Yes. Now I get the money depending on where my decorator um, is located. So the upgrading of the stone gives me three, and then the wood is one, like uh, lacquer is one, and um, there is one, which yes. gives you six. Thank you. And you have enough to activate a second monk if, if, I want if you want to. to. Yeah. All right, now I get to activate one of my decorators as well. Um, my more valuable one, I don't have any stone. All I can do is one wood. So I'll do that. One wood. And that gets me one coin. Well done. Okay. Uh, now it's my turn and I'm in, I'm in the same position. I'm out of normal workers. But I do have monks and enough to hire one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend six, six to hire this monk. And I'm going to go to the palace. So I'm going to build up my family members here. 
I've used up the last action space there. You can see two other spaces, but those are for three and four players. And so I'm going to place a family member there. I'm going to move this one here. Now, and because I used my monk, I get to take one of these bonuses twice. And so I'm going to do this one, advancing my decorator. So I took this end of game on a card earlier that gives me the most points if I can max out all my decorators. So I want to try to do that. So I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to advance my lacquer decorator twice. And then I get to move a sword. And I can complete this sword. So I'm going to push the, the red cube onto there, advance that up to here. I could wait, and I would get more points for this sword if I waited until I decorated that lacquer, but I want to finish that now so I get another worker to use. So that's what I'm going to... I'll, pa I'll pause for a minute, I'll let you take your... because um, you get to do one of these actions as well, so I'll let you do that first and then I'll deliver the sword. That's correct. Well, out of these that I can use, I could take two money, or one money and a, a wood, or moving one of these things again. Um, I could also use this card if I want to, to move family member, but what I want is actually, I'm already in there. So I want to use this one to move one of my swords. Yes. Um, now this is, you know, ideally it'll be in the one row, one column. Obviously it's not always possible. So I'm going to use, to move this one yep. to the right and put the wood there. Yes. So, um, yeah, so this one next, it will go to the right. This one, it will free up the space for this one as well. And we'll see what happens. Yep. So now I will deliver this sword the same way that I did before. So it's five points, plus two points for the round, plus six points for the decorations here. So three for leather, two for stone, and one for wood, which is a total of 13. So I advanced to 27. Then I get the benefits at the end of the row, which is a lacquer and a stone. Got to get some swords that need lacquer and stones. And five coins. And I get five coins wow, for here. Wow, that's good. This blue sashimono goes on here. And then I move the sword over here. I unlock another worker. And I can put the last two uh, resources that I need, technically, for the Shogun Sword. So I could start building my Shogun Sword right now because I've got at least one of each. And for the sake of demonstrating how that works, I'm actually going to do that now. Um, I could wait around and get a bigger sword, but I'm going to try to deliver a small sword. So I'm going to take the Shogun Sword. Sorry, first I need to decide the order of resources. So I place these cubes down here uh, and this represents that I'm treating this sword as if it is leather, stone, wood, lacquer. Just like if, well, exactly like this sword. I'm basically making this sword for the Shogun. So then I move the Shogun sword down into the equivalent position for leather. And now, you know, that may be a strategic error going for a low value sword here. Um, but, you know, I, at least I definitely get it delivered. Now, I'm out of workers, but yet again, I still have my monk and I have money to pay. So I'll do that. Pay six for round number two. Yep. Take the monk. Now, I'll, I want to get more swords here to get more combos going on. I will go to here and get this one. Now, this is actually a uh, white one. Now, the reason I'm going there, part of the reason anyways, um, it, it's cheap. And the white one, I also want to try to score points at the end of the game here. So that's three coins, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Terence has got a worker there. So he's going to use it and that's this is my last action. So because if I pass first, I get to choose one of these two endgame objectives. Hmm. Yes. So I'll put it there, I get the coin. Now, this is the monk action. Because it's more powerful, I get to choose a second flag. A second flag. So the combo it. So put it there straight away. Yeah. So now if I finish this, I've got two. If I take that, then that's eight points. And I also get this guard. 
Very good. Okay, so with my last worker, and I do have enough money to potentially do a monk action as well, um, I could also pass, because if Stella takes this objective, this one's actually really bad for me. I don't have anything like that. Oh, yeah. So I could even pass to get my preferred endgame objective, but there's a sword out there that I really want to get. I've got all this lacquer. I generated a whole lot of lacquer. If I take this sword here, uh, it uses two lacquer to start off, and that's really efficient for me, and lacquer gets a lot of points when you decorate. So I'm going to take that sword. And you need more swords anyway now that you only have one. Correct, yes. I need to refill my swords. So one way or another that's going to be my next action. Six money. I take the six coins. I get another blue Sashimono. So it doesn't sort of meet any of the objectives, but it really is the best sword for me. And I take this card, which when I go to the market next is going to give me the lacquer I need to kick off my um, Shogun Sword. Very good. So that, that's my action. And I pass. I don't have anything else that I can use. Hence, I will take this. Very good. I still have enough money to hire my other monk. And I think that's what I'll do. I'll keep building up my supply of swords. So I'm going to spend six to get my other monk. He's going to go into one of these. I think he'll grab this one and part of that is part of getting this is i know i now need swords that have a two or more on the forging value because that'll be worth points when i complete it so i can take that and put it here because it is stone i get the four coins as shown on the sword it also allows me to take this card which will give me wood when i go to the market I'm short of wood at the moment. Um, I take the red Sashimono and put it on here. And because he's a monk, I can take another Sashimono. And if I take green, that will allow me, once I finish the red one, to complete a full set. And that will be, a full set is worth seven points. So that is helpful. And you've already passed. And I finish by taking this honor card. And there we go. That's the end of round two of Shogun Nakatana. So now we have to set up for the next round. All right, so we advance the next round. Now, no one picked the first player space, which means first player simply rotates clockwise. All right, and then we return our monks to the uh, temple. We bring all our workers back home. Let's do that. They come off our uh, boards as well, where we had the columns. Then we refill all of the empty spaces in the sword market. Uh, remembering that there'll be uh, one extra sword in each house in a four player game. And then finally we reveal one new honor card for each player in the game, which will be available at the end of the next round. So here we've got one worth eight points, and one which favours green sashimonos. And that's our pocket playthrough for Shogun no Katana. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Shogun no Katana is going to Kickstarter, so we'll put the link in the description below when it is live, so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button, and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. Until next time!